personal injury court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Reed versus Smith. You all have submitted documents to this court. It's my understanding, Mr. Reed, that you are suing for facial and chest burns that you sustain at the defendant's bar, Mr. Smith's bar, that you are suing him for $100,000 in medical bills, $200,000 in future medical bills, and $500,000 for pain and suffering for a total of $800,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Smith, your response to this lawsuit is he's responsible for his own injuries because he knew what he was doing, basically. That's correct, Your Honor. Okay, well now, let's get into the legal sauce. Mr. Reed, tell me, what led you to go to the bar that night? I was with my lovely girlfriend, Antonio, and I used to actually work at this bar. You did? Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. What'd you do at the bar? Well, I was a bartender. Okay. Yes, sir, and I, I could bounce if need be. Uh, but anyways, I was taking her to the bar, uh, show her some, some old friends, some old co-workers, and really just to have a good time. Going back to your old stomping ground. Oh, yes, sir. Was, okay. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Now, your bar. Tell me about your bar. It's always been a really fun place, Your Honor. Uh, he worked there for me for several years after college when he needed a job. It's a fun place where all the locals, all the college students go just to have a really good time. What makes your place unique? We're known every weekend for doing some stunts and performances, including the fire incident, which brought us here today. Mr. Smith, you submitted a video of the stunt that makes your bar famous, right? Yes, sir. Let's take a look at it. Now, talk me through this. What is happening here? So, successfully done, you're taking a shot of high-proof liquor. And, and what, is, what is he doing here? What's the goal? What is the attraction? To put the mist of the shot over the flame in order to make it look like you're breathing fire. And this makes the bar crowds go crazy oh, on the beat? they love it. Are you doing this every night? Most nights, yes. And while you work there, you uh, saw people do this stunt? Absolutely, I used to do it myself. So the stunt itself is not new to you? No, sir, not And at you all. used to do it. You used absolutely, to get, yeah. You used to get yeah, alcohol absolutely. in your mouth and blow it into yes, a flame? Yes, sir, absolutely. Okay, I, you I ever was, burn yourself the, before? I was the toast of the town. You ever burned yourself before? No, sir. Have you ever had anybody burn themselves while doing the stunt? No, sir. We have trained employees who do this stunt, and he worked for me for several years where he worked at this bar, and he did this stunt thousands of times. Thousands. So he's not a novice? No, sir. And, and you're not a novice, are you, Mr. Reed? No, sir. Okay, so what happens? You go to the bar. I was out there in the crowd with my girlfriend, and he spots me. So he asked me to come into the employees only area. So he wanted me to basically kind of come out of retirement. He wanted me to do the fire breathing trick that I had done years ago. So in the past, he must have done this trick pretty well for you yes, to ask sir. him to Your do Honor, it. Yes, sir. If, if I may, he yes, wanted him to perform something he hadn't practiced or prepared in years. It was his choice to do it. So, Ma'am, for the record, state your name. My name is Antonia Guzman. And Ms. Guzman, were you there? Yes, I was actually there. We were having a date night. And Mr. Reap, what happened? He wanted me to continue to do the stunt that I'd done in the past, okay. years ago. This isn't some game. We're talking about alcohol and fire, right? It's dangerous. It is very dangerous. It's even dangerous when you do it with the proper uh, proof of alcohol. And you knew that? Of course, okay. of course. So I didn't want to do it, I didn't want to do it. He would not leave me alone. He started getting everyone in the crowd to start chanting, Robin. Robin. So you start Robin. feeling the, oh, the pressure feeling, of the crowd. I, I can't even lie. Mr. Reed, uh, tell me what happened. How did you get hurt? Once, uh, once he basically coerced me into doing it, he gave me the lighter, bottle of uh, liquor, and it's really a torch more than a lighter. Okay. Uh, but then like you light a cigar? You can't use it. That's kind of well. You can, but you kind of have to use kind of a blowtorch. Okay. That's really the genuinely... Uh, so you got a bottle of liquor bottle and a blowtorch. And a blowtorch, okay. yes, sir. Absolutely. This sounds like a good evening start. I know, I know. So what happened? So I did what I've normally done in the past years ago. Okay. I took a shot of the liquor. See, the crazy thing is the liquor doesn't actually cause the flame. It's the vapor that comes off the liquor. So okay. if it's too strong, it's really I didn't know that. dangerous. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Um, it's really dangerous. So it's the mist that comes off the liquor that is ignitable. Right, yes, sir. So, so what did you do? So I, I took a, a drink of the liquor out of the bottle and I went to blow it out to the torch. Now, when you did that, is that how you've done it before? Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. so then what happened? Uh, then before I knew it, all I could see was flames. I knew something wasn't right. So after my face and my chest and my neck 
were on fire. So your your face was actually engulfed My in flames? My face was on fire. These bandages aren't fake. So you're engulfed in flames, then what? We were on the beach, of course. It's a beach bar. So I dove face first into the sand. Couldn't see that, couldn't see where I was diving exactly. Actually dove and hit a rock. When you say you hit a rock, what part of your body hit the rock? My nose. So that's uh, why you got your nose part of my jaw. So my nose is broken and two of my back teeth were knocked out. So Mr. Smith, what do you remember? He's, he's got selective amnesia, your honor. Okay. What do you remember? Like, like you heard him say, he was the talk of the town. He was almost a local celebrity. He said it himself. So it did not take much coercion. It didn't take much to get him up there and do the stunt. But you're not saying you didn't encourage him, right? I may have encouraged him, but I didn't force it upon him. He's a grown man. He chose to do that stunt. And you let him go forward and do the stunt, yes, right? Yes, he's, he's a dramatic. He was dramatic back in college. He's dramatic when he worked How, for how's me. This, how's this now, dramatic for you? Is that dramatic now, for you? He, I thought he was Paul, just performing look, still. Look, Paul, I thought Mr. he was Reed, performing still. Direct your comments to me Sorry. so I, I can figure this out. he was just performing out. still. When he dove onto the ground, I thought that was part of the performance. You didn't realize that he was badly no, hurt. No, I didn't. And once I realized, I was the first person to call 911. This had to make your heart stop. Of course it did. You I got... could have waited for her to call 911. What was she doing? Filming. So I'm clear, that night, you actually caught on video his face exploding into flames. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Reed, I know you've been through a lot. Is it okay that we watch that so I can understand it? Absolutely. Can you get sir. through that? I, I have nothing to hide, so absolutely. Well, let's, absolutely. let's take a look at it. So this is you. Talk me through this. What are you doing? Right, so there, there's the liquor, and there's the torch, and there's my face Whoa. on fire. Whoa. Whoa. Right? Whoa. Right? I know yeah. you must have been going crazy. Exactly. When you go down, that's when you jump down into the sand. And, and that's where I hit my nose and, and also knocked out two of my teeth. So why this man doesn't want to man up and help me out when it happened on your property the first person at your bar? And what was your girlfriend doing? Aren't you old? You know, you guys are old to be a bartender. You guys you sound like on fire. you guys sound like old friends. But today you talk to me, Mr. Smith. When his face goes up in flames, didn't you think by then something had gone? Back? You don't believe this is your fault, do you? No, it's not my fault, sir. Tell me why. He did this of his own free will. I did not force the bottle into his hands, which is the same bottle that all my other employees used. It's not the right proof of alcohol. This is it not is rocket the same science. You're that lying. All my it's other not rocket use. science. Mentiroso. Folks, he should know the strength of the alcohol. See, you, you can get away. Did you know the strength of the alcohol? I did not. And he shouldn't have done it. It was his choice you to do You shouldn't have asked me, moron. You are a grown man. You chose now, to do it. Mr. Reed, I need to understand this. You are suing Mr. Smith for $100,000 in past medical expenses and then $200,000 mm -hmm. for future medical expenses. Correct. What, what is your understanding of what you're going to need uh, for, for future Multiple meds? skin grafts? And multiple different plastic surgeries. Face and chest? Absolutely. That's you, right? Yes, sir. Uh, tell me what we're looking at here. This you're, is, you're, this is well, right I'll after. Well, I'll tell you what you're looking at. You're looking at third degree burns. On your forehead and your I, cheeks. I, I look like a, a villain in a movie. So I'm coming for that movie star check. How about your chest? So <laughs> that's your chest? Absolutely. Mr. Smith, this is the result of the stunt being done. I mean, regardless of whose fault it is, it happened in your bar, right? Yes, Your Honor. But you believe he took it on himself and this is the price of doing dangerous things? Yes, Your Honor. Can you see that, Mr. Reed? No. That this is the price of doing dangerous things? You don't see it that way? When the other party in, in the stunt is negligent, absolutely. Mr. Reed, tell me this. Sir. Is there anything you'd like to say to him? Yeah. And I want you to receive Absolutely. it. Absolutely. But respectfully. Absolutely. Cut the check. <laughs> Thought you'd say more, but we'll deal with that. So, Mr. Smith, tell me this. With your prior employees who have done this stunt, did any of them refuse? They always have the right to refuse. He could have refused, and I'm not going to punish them for it. Now, on this night, though, you've got a full bar. Yes. It's my understanding that the crowd was getting hyped up, mm -hmm. so everybody's looking forward to this. Kind of hard to say no, right? Maybe, but he still has that right. And you could have said no, right, Mr. Reed? 100%. He does all of this for his social and, media and you, accounts. And you think giving, oh, giving way to the and pressure. And Paul, coming, Paul the, gentlemen, adult, the adults are speaking. Gentlemen, we need order in this court. His girlfriend admitted to filming it. She was there filming the stunt the entire time for her social media page, which she said. You have a problem it. with her filming it? When I was the first one to call 911 and she continued to film the stunt, 
because this is what he does. So Miss Guzman, you filmed this all the way with Mr. Reed going down to the sand uh, after he had been engulfed in flames. Yes. Why did you do that? Yes, Your Honor, but Are it there was- social media? It wasn't until I heard him yell in pain from hitting uh, his nose on the rock. I stopped filming as soon as that happened. But when he burst into flames, you still thought it was part of the stunt. I did. I actually had no idea that he was. And Mr. Smith, you thought so too. Yes, I did. Well, at least we got one thing we agree on, right? That both of you didn't know that it had gone bad until he went down to the ground. Yes, Your Honor. Right? So you go down into the sand, and that's when you slam your face onto a rock. Face first. And it I did, see did him it knock you out? Knocked out cold? No, but I was I stunned? Were two of my teeth gone? Was my nose broken? Did I have third degree burns all over my body? Yes, absolutely. Now, Mr. Smith, you uh, you seem like you were a little ticked about the whole social media flair that Miss Guzman adds to this equation. Why? Because that is proof that that is part of the lifestyle they both choose to live. It's because he's, he's not popular. A social, yeah. media yeah. social media lifestyle? He's just jealous. The social media of his dangerous stunts. He doesn't have any friends. That is what their social media pages <laughs> yeah. are dedicated to. Well, you actually are... submitted some materials to the court that uh, captured some of that stuff. These documents are from the plaintiff's social media, right? Mm-hmm. No safety gear, he's free Now, punk. Mr. Reed, that's you on the side of that uh, mountain, right? Oh, yes, sir. Miss Guzman, do you accompany him on these, uh, these thrill-seeking exercises? Yes, Your Honor, I am his personal videographer. So, so you're filming in full anticipation that you're gonna put it online? Yes, Your Honor. And as you can see, he is an, a pro, but no one is. But the is thing was, it hadn't been five years in between since I last kayaked. No one is uh, pressuring him to do something he had never practiced. And yet he He's chose never to do it done. himself. But but y'all y'all agree that you are a bit of a thrill seeker, right? I would say we live life. Okay. The now, Mr. Smith, given that he's a thrill seeker, did that enter into your decision to ask him to do this stuff? Yeah, I knew he enjoyed performing for crowds. I knew he enjoyed those aspects of those dangerous stunts, and I trusted that it was gonna go okay. Mr. Reed, I understand your injuries. I wanna understand the pain and suffering experience. Tell me what you're going through. So I have third degree burns on my face, yes, my sir. neck, and my chest. Add the two, two teeth that were gone, and the broken nose. But Your Honor, it's not about the physical thing. Seems things. like this hurts you even to look at these pictures. Well, it does. Your it Honor, does. it's also hurting our bedroom Whoa, life. Whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> so you're rough on everybody. Show respect, show respect. At I least apologize. in my courtroom, do so. I apologize. Now, what's been your daily experience but, with these but, injuries? But it's that the physical things can heal, Your Honor. It's the things you can't see. And None of that is my fault. That's what this guy can't understand. Are you worried about scarring to your face? Absolutely. Gentlemen, I think I've heard everything I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. Right. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff has to prove three things. That the defendant committed a wrong that caused the plaintiff's injuries. Here, you're doing a stunt at Mr. Smith's prompting. Mm -hmm. But you had every expectation that the alcohol would be proper mm -hmm. and that this would turn out just fine. And frankly, it would end up on social media and people would think you were a bad mamma jamma, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, Your Honor. You, on the other hand, Mr. Smith, you say he did this willingly. No one coerced him. He could have said no. Yes, right? Your Honor. Well, see, that's the tricky part when you apply law to this. The law requires that I, as the judge, consider the fault of everyone involved. Everyone had a hand in this. You could have said no, Mr. Reed. You could have not gotten him involved, Mr. Smith. The result was terrible and life altering. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a legal lesson, Mr. Reed. Mm -hmm. When you take on something as dangerous as spitting alcohol into a flame, you have to understand that this can go bad and you must take ownership both of the risk but also of the consequences. Mr. Smith, let me give you a legal lesson. Whenever you as a proprietor engage in an activity or encourage people to engage in an activity that is inherently dangerous, you must take extra care mm -hmm. to make sure that people are safe. That's and that's right. what this case is about. Mr. Reed, you are asking this court to give you $200,000 for future medicals, mm -hmm. $100,000 for your medical bills. Yes, Your Honor. And $500,000 for pain and suffering. Absolutely. I am not going to give you all of that because not all of this was Mr. Smith's fault. 
So you are at fault for your injuries, but not alone. I find that you're 49% at fault, and you, Mr. Smith, are 51% at fault. Mr. Reed, I find in your favor, in the amount of $408,000, 51% of what you are seeking. That is my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Chad Dudley has to say. Two things stand out in this case. First, ask yourself if it's worth the risk when it literally involves mixing fire with alcohol. These two elements, when mixed, are a potential recipe for disaster. And second, if you have any video pictures of an accident, save them. Do not destroy the evidence. The video in this claim clearly demonstrated what happened, the extent of the fire that injured him, and it was a key part in winning his case. Personal Injury Court. This is the case of Raymond versus Robinson. This is a premises liability case where you, Mr. Raymond, sustained some pretty severe injuries on Mr. Robinson's property. You're asking this court to make an award for medical bills of $100,000, lost wages of $50,000, and pain and suffering of $100,000 for a total award of $250,000. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. And Mr. Robinson, you believe that Mr. Raymond is responsible for his own injuries in crossing your property, right? Yes, Your Honor, I do. All right. Well, let's get into the legal sauce, gentlemen. Mr. Raymond, tell me how we got here. What led to you going to this property? I'm a licensed uh, plumber. Okay. And I got a call from Mark, um, a very frantic call, asking me to drop what I was doing and come fix this issue. How long have you been a plumber? I've been a plumber uh, for about 20 years. Okay. I've been uh, taking care of this building for about seven. So you've done work for Mr. Robinson before? I have, and uh, he keeps me he keeps me fully employed. Um, I do a really great job. I love what I do. I've been able to make a living for my family for quite a few years now. So, Mr. Robinson, you had an emergency this day. Yes, Your Honor, I did. Basically, what had happened was we had a sewage build up in the pipeline, and it was starting to overflow through the grass. I was getting many complaints from all the residents. But before uh, this day, he was your plumber. He was the guy that took care of your needs. Yes, Your Honor, about seven years. I mean, he's a good guy. He's, he's done good work, um, other than the fact that I've started to know uh, a lack of performance lately. Okay, so he's kind of your main guy, despite some ticks here and there, but he's your main guy. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Robinson, this property is an apartment building, right? Yes, Your you Honor. You got a bunch of toilets, bunch of sinks, bunch of bathrooms, right? That's correct. Plenty need for a plumber. Mm-hmm. How many units? Units, there's a total of 45 units in the main building. And how long have you owned this building? I've owned this building for the past 12 years. And, Mr. Raymond, what happened on this day? Uh, on this day, I, I got this call. It was an emergency. So I, I dropped what I was doing. I headed straight over there in my truck, my work truck, parked in front of the building. I grabbed my toolbox and I got there. I could see him waving at me. And, at and the, the emergency, Mr. Robinson, was this uh, sewage buildup? Yes, Your Honor. It was mm -hmm. a catastrophe. And, it, and it's something only a plumber could address and absolutely, solve. Absolutely, and immediately. So, Mr. Raymond, you were going over to solve this emergency. Yes, sir. So uh, then what happened? I parked right in front of the building so I could have access to my work vehicle. Yes, sir. I grabbed my toolbox and I started heading straight to him. Few steps in and my foot went through a hole and I went down, sir. I went down and I was hurt. My shoulder, my side, my ankle. I didn't know what was wrong, but I couldn't get up. Mr. Robinson, did you see this? Yes, Your Honor, I did. Mr. Raymond, what's that hole about? You submitted this photograph. Yeah, so that's, oh, I'm sorry. So that's the hole that I put my foot through as I was trying to get across to fix this other emergency. Okay, uh, and you, you stepped in through. that hole? Yes, sir. Okay, and that's why I see you've got this boot on your right foot. Is that the foot that went into this I hole? I broke my ankle going in there. I broke my ankle and so I've got a boot here that's, I can, I can hardly walk, I can't, I can't do much because- Now I see you've got that shoulder apparatus on. What happened to your shoulder? So I, uh, I, I separated and dislocated the shoulder when I went down. Okay. And then part of that tore my rotator cuff, so I had to have surgery for that. 
So this was a nasty shoulder. It was, it was a very, very bad, bad hurt. Well, yes. Mr. Robinson, that had to be shocking even to watch. I mean, you see him go down and he's pretty badly hurt. Were you concerned? At the moment, yeah, but at the same time, Your Honor, this injury was based off pure negligence. How was he responsible? I don't think so. Well, for starters, he walked through the grass instead of the sidewalk. I mean, well, what's sidewalk, the harm of walking through the grass? I walked through my grass this morning to get to my car. The thing here is there was a sign in the grass that said, keep off of the grass. Did you see a there, keep off I the grass not, sign? There's no sign there when that's, I was there. That's not true, Your Honor. There, there was a sign right well, there. Well, you remember passed. a sign being there. Yes, Your Honor. I'm the one who put it and in there. And if it was there, you didn't see I it. I did not. I was, I was handling an emergency, and he was standing. For him. For him. <laughs> I was coming at him. My, my biggest issue is that this should never have happened. He's right. This was negligence. It was his negligence. So, Mr. Robinson, <laughs> is this the sign you put up? Yes, Your Honor. This is the sign that I put up. Mr. Raymond, I, I, I can't I, see how you missed that I one. I didn't see it, sir. I was... I, you were focused on his I emergency. Was, he was jumping up and down, waving his arms at me. You didn't expect that he was kind of just going to lollygag around on the sidewalk and take his own time, right? The sidewalk was two feet from his car door. He chose to walk through well, the grass. Well, you submitted a diagram kind of laying this out. Yes, could, Your Honor, Could you I go did. to the podium? I want you to explain this for me. Because you, you saw the whole thing. Now, okay. where are you? I am right here, just outside the main entrance of our main building. Basically, I made the call first. Okay. And then what happened is, this is a one-way street. All right. This is one way here. He comes this way, and then he parks the vehicle right here. Since the driver's side is on the opposite side of where I am, he walks around the side to get the bag. Okay. I had to grab my and from box. at this point, I am signaling, oh, so I need you. You're not saying come here. You're no, saying, I'm saying go around. I need you. I, yes, because I'm trying to wave him in the direction of the apparent sidewalk that's right next to where he could have walked. So, Mr. Raymond, if he's telling you go around, I mean, I understand that uh, a septic soup in an apartment is not a good thing, but it's not like anybody's going to die. I understand what he's saying. Okay. But I've worked with him for so many years. Yes, sir. He wasn't saying go around. He was saying hurry up. That's... Hurry up. Get no. over here. Like I, he, and he you were trying to get to him as soon me. as possible. Yeah, he was already frustrated that I wasn't being fast enough, so I was going as fast as I could. So, Mr. Robinson, you can return to the podium. Mr. Raymond, I want you to go over there and you tell me what happened. Use this diagram. Okay, so... Take your time. Thank you, Your Honor. So, so tell this me is what exactly happened. how it was. The, the issue was up here. I could see him waving at me, being frantic. I knew that this was where I was going to have to work. So I wasn't going to drive on the grass and get over there and create more of an issue. So you I didn't left have my, to do my that, truck Your there. You so park your truck there. You park your truck, uh, and then where do you go? I went straight to him, and that hole happened to be in the way. Now, and, the, and right there in the middle is uh -huh. where that drain hole is that you stepped in. Now, had there been a sign, there what? should have been a sign by the hole. There well, should have been something there to warn. Mr. Robinson has the sign right over there. I did not see that sign. You had to pass that way. It was that, one way. That sign, it, you had that to pass the just saw, You, you saw the, the sidewalks, right? Yes, the side. Yes, but if I block the sidewalk, Your Honor, then that's going to uh, restrict traffic because I'm going to be working there for a while. It's a one so way I've got to park man. where I can Nobody's access my vehicle to get back and forth and, and get the tools that I need. So, but you thought it was an emergency and you need to get to I him right away. I treated it like the emergency that he was letting me know it was. Now, Mr. Robinson, you well, can see though, I mean, his heart's in the right place. He's trying to get to your catastrophe right away. You see that? Yes, Your Honor. I saw him up there and he was, he was up there waving. Oh. You can return to the podium. He was waving his arms. It was an emergency and I had I, I, I treated it like a professional. I went as fast as I could. He's never moved fast a day in his life, Your Honor. But he must have been moving fast enough for you to hire him over and again, right? <laughs> you said you blew your shoulder out and you broke your ankle. Yes, sir. My, my ankle was, was broken all the way through. Okay. My shoulder was dislocated and I tore my rotator cuff. Well, I see here that you are seeking $100,000 in past medical bills. You had a lot of medical treatment for these injuries. Yes, yes, I did. And I see that you have $50,000 in lost wages. I, I take it this ankle and shoulder don't let you work as a plumber. No, I, I have been off of work. I can't... 
do anything other than just wait and heal right now. Um, so, Mr. Robinson, do you see the position at least that he's in? Uh, no, I don't, Your Honor. Okay. This is yeah. his negligence. Yes. This is his negligence, Your Honor. Okay. He's been complaining to me for the past year and a half that he has bad knees. So hard luck and move on. He's been using the bad knee excuse forever. So I think that he decided to take it easy on himself because his knees were hurting. I, so I the, do the so grass the, and avoid the sidewalk right you, there. You Your Honor, let me, let me show you. The braces that oh, I have. What are you getting? Let me show you the braces. These oh, are over the okay. counter All right. braces. They're not medical. They're to help me do my job. I'm a plumber. I'm always well, on that was knees. That was a little more than I wanted to see, but... But I appreciate you doing that now. I just want to show you so you can see. These are not to help me walk. They're just, I'm, I'm a plumber. I'm on my knees a lot. This gives me support. Like a back brace would give me support if I'm lifting. Well, you've just given a whole new meaning to plumber's crack. <laughs> <laughs> sheriff, Matt, if you would let him, uh, let the sheriff help you pull your pants Thank up. Thank you. <laughs> I've got it. Take him one for the team, here. Sheriff. Mm. You good? All right, I almost got it right here. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, thank you. You are suing Mr. Robinson for $250,000. Part of that is $100,000 for pain and suffering. Tell me about your pain and suffering. What have you been through? Okay, so this has affected my whole life. My whole life. 24 hours a day, I'm in pain. Now, this didn't used to be. I separated and dislocated the shoulder when I went down. Part of that tore my rotator cuff, so I had to have surgery for that. I'm captain of my bowling team. We were going to nationals, and we had to forfeit because I can't bowl. It's one of the things that I'm good at that I really love doing. I let him all down because of his negligence. My, my biggest issue is that this should never have happened. Mr. Robinson, you can see that this has affected his life, right? Even yes, if you Honor. don't believe it's your fault, you can see it's had an impact yes, on him. Yes, Your Honor. I mean, I do. bowling, pastimes. Even taking a shower takes about two hours. You know, it's, it's hard when you can't even wipe yourself. Well, I would have offered Sheriff Matt to go home with you, but he didn't like pulling your pants off. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you had an opportunity to say something to Mr. Robinson, I mean, you all had a relationship before this. What would you say to him about what you've been through? And Mr. Robinson, I want you to receive it. Mark. I have been working for you. I've been loyal for seven, eight years, something like that. Whenever you need me, you count on me. And I always do it. I may not always get it as fast as you want, but these things take time. Now I've been injured, and then you're adding insult to that injury. The biggest thing that I want you to remember here... And receive this. Receive yes. it. Yes, Your Honor. Is that you installed that drain in the first place. I... Mr. Robinson, he installed that drain that yes, he stepped Your Honor. in? It was a special project that needed a certain amount of focus on it. I knew he could get it done, so I tasked him to do the job. Now, Are you now telling Mr. me he Raymond, forgot that it was there? Come on now. Let me show you. That's now, right. I did install that. How is he responsible for a drain you put in? Let me show you why. That hole had this on top of it to cover it. This is the safety feature that goes on top of the hole. So when you installed it, you I put that on top. This and this is a sign. This is a sign that there's a warning. There's a, something here. Don't step on that. Mr. Robinson, do you remember when he installed it and these things were present? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Okay. And so uh, were these things present the day he fell in the hole? No, Your Honor, they were not. Why not? They weren't present because a crew member of the lawn mowing company that he referred me to ran over that same top. So on the day of this fall, those things, that cover and the flag that Mr. There, Raymond put in there, was, they weren't there. It happened the day before the incident, Your Honor. Well, why not replace it? Well, I had to... I put the sign down because I didn't have the actual top, like the cover to it, to install. Did the sign keep people off the grass? Your Honor, it actually did. Had you seen that sign, would you have used the sidewalk? I don't no. think I would have because it's not a warning sign. It's more of, that sign looked like, I'm trying to grow my grass, please don't kill it by walking on it. <laughs> it doesn't say you're about to change your whole life because of negligence. He's got a point. You're not buying that though, are you, Your He's Honor? He's got a point. Society. What does it matter if the grass needs cut or if we gotta lay fertilizer or if people like to have picnics out there and we don't want people walking on picnics? It doesn't matter. We yeah. just need the people to know the message on the sign and to not walk on the grass. I think I've heard enough. 
I'm ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff must prove three things. The plaintiff must prove that the defendant did something wrong and that wrong caused your injuries. Mr. Raymond, you were clearly injured. You were injured when you stepped into a hole that you didn't remember was there because the cover was missing and the flag was missing. Had they been there, you would have run right around them and solved his problems and you all would not be here today. That's correct, Your Honor. Mr. Robinson, you believe he put the hole there. He should know that. Plus, you got a big sign saying stay off the grass. The sidewalk is 12 to 20 feet away. He could have done that and solved your problem and we wouldn't be here today. Yes, Your Honor. I mean, there's no way you forget a job that you do. There's well, no that kind of hits that. common sense. Yeah, but the, but the law's beyond common sense. It's pretty technical. And the technical part of the law says that when you are a landowner or a building owner, you have a responsibility to maintain the property. That is, in its safe condition, you keep it safe. The problem I have here is that it was safe when Mr. Raymond put that cover on and put the sign up. But when you knew that your guys had hit it with the lawnmower, now it became a hazard that he wouldn't necessarily know about. I find, Mr. Raymond, that you have proven that Mr. Robinson was wrong in not at least telling you about this hole being there or at least replacing the cap. I find that you have proven that his wrong in not replacing the cap caused your injuries. And in that regard, I'm going to award you $100,000 in medical bills, $50,000 in lost wages, and every single penny of $100,000 for pain and suffering, Your Honor. For a total award of $250,000. I find in your favor and against Mr. Robinson, that is my verdict, and this matter is adjourned. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Gary Martin Hayes has to say. Mr. Raymond was able to prove the defendant's negligence by using a diagram showing the location of the accident, plus photos depicting the hole without the drain cover. Now, it's so important to get pictures of the scene of an incident, as well as any condition or instrument that may have caused the injury. Strong testimony and exhibits really help you explain what happened with great detail to a jury.